Hello and welcome back to Manifolds, the video series where we talk about generalized surfaces. And in today's part 21, we will finally define the tangent space for abstract manifolds. So this will generalize the notion of a tangent space for submanifolds. However, before we go into the definition, first I want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, via PayPal, on Patreon or by other means. Your support makes it possible that I can create such videos about abstract mathematical concepts. And please don't forget, you find additional content with the link in the description. Ok, then let's immediately start by recalling that we have already defined the tangent space for submanifolds in the last two videos. And now we will finally go one step more abstract and we will drop the submanifold condition. Hence, this means this left hand side here only exists if M is a subset of Rn. And of course, we always take a smooth manifold here. And we have the same on the right hand side, but here you see the manifold does not have to be embedded into Rn. So this is what we call an abstract manifold, because we don't need any space around it. However, the obvious problem there is, if there is no space around it, how can we define a tangent vector? On the other hand, on the left hand side here, you already know how it works, because we just need to take a curve gamma inside the manifold through the point P. And then the derivative of the curve gives us a tangent vector. Now the thing is, this tangent vector does not live in the manifold, but it lives in Rn. So we explicitly use the surrounding space here. However, on the right hand side here, there is no space around it, there is just the manifold itself. Therefore, the immediate question is, what is a good substitute for our Rn? Because otherwise everything looks the same, we have the point P and we can look at curves through P. The only problem there is that the derivative does not make sense. Therefore, we see it's not clear what this abstract tangent vector should be. However, you might already guess that there is a reason why we had this long discussion about curves in the last video. There, as you should recall, we used the chart H to push everything to the RK. So this is the common lower level in our manifold picture where k is the dimension of the manifold. And there, please remind yourself, everything made sense and we also could find the curve there. And in fact, this is exactly the idea we can use on the abstract manifold as well. Simply because there on the lower level, there is no difference between a submanifold and an abstract manifold. Therefore, instead of using the actual tangent vectors, we could also use the ones we find here in RK. Of course, there we don't have a problem, because also in the abstract version of the manifold, such a vector here exists. However, now the correct question is, can we use that as a substitute for the actual tangent vector? And obviously, we could do that if we knew what the map H does to the tangent vector. Because then, we could simply go backwards to define the actual tangent vector. Now, this is exactly the idea you should have in mind for the following definition. Let's define the set of curves on M through the point P. For the moment, this will be CPM and it's a whole set. So let's consider curves gamma defined on a small interval around zero, so minus epsilon to epsilon. And this is mapped into the manifold M. And here please keep in mind, M could be a very abstract smooth manifold. And now the only condition we need for these curves is that they are differentiable and go through the point P. Ok, and now you know, for such a curve gamma, we can also define the curve here on the lower level. And of course, this will be simply the composition H after gamma. Ok, so here please don't forget, this differentiable for gamma means that we have a differentiability between manifolds. So here we have our new differentiability notion, which simply means that on a lower level we have the ordinary one. Hence, h after gamma is just a common differentiable map between r and rk. And that's exactly what we use now for defining this tangent vector on the lower level. 
So as always, we simply use the derivative at the point zero. Okay, now at this point, please recall for the submanifolds, the tension vector was not so dependent on the curve at all. More precisely, different curves can give us the same tangent vector in the end. And of course, we have the same on the lower level. So just imagine we take another curve alpha here, which has the same tangent vector on the lower level. Therefore, if we are just interested in the end result, both curves are exactly the same for us. We don't have to distinguish between both curves, because in the end they give us the same tangent vector anyway. So for a precise definition, we would say that gamma and alpha are equivalent to each other. Hence we see this new equivalent relation is defined with the right hand side. So if the derivatives are the same on the lower level, we call the two curves equivalent. And here please note, it does not matter for which chart you check that. So you just have to check that for one chart uh. Indeed, if you change the charts with transition maps, we still get the same result here. Okay, now by having an equivalent relation, you should also know that we immediately get equivalent classes. This is a box where we put in all the elements that are equivalent to gamma. In other words, all the curves alpha that fulfill this property here are inside this set. So we see all the curves in this box have the same tangent vector. Therefore, we can simply say this box represents a tangent vector. So what you should see here is that this representing of tangent vectors works perfectly for submanifolds. And the important thing for us is now, it can also be translated to the abstract case. And with that, we have finally found one possibility to deal with tangent vectors on an abstract manifold. Therefore, eventually, we can define the tangent space for a manifold. And as mentioned before, the name is simply TPM. And you might already guess, it's simply the set of all equivalence classes. And the set of all equivalence classes is usually denoted by this modulo operator. So not complicated at all, first we define all the boxes that represent tangent vectors and then we simply calculate with these boxes. And there we have it, this is the famous tangent space for the manifold M. Okay, at this point I can already tell you that there are different definitions for the tangent space, but it turns out they also give the same result in the end. So it's just a matter of taste which definition you choose and maybe we talk about later that they are all equivalent. But first we want to state the important result we have here. First, for a submanifold, we now have two different notions for the tangent space. Namely, the common one from the last video and now this abstract one when we see M as an abstract manifold. However, it's not hard to see that there is a natural bijection between them. In other words, we can see them as the same thing. Indeed, on the left hand side here, we would have a vector in Rn. And this one is given by the derivative of the curve gamma at the point zero. And on the right hand side, we would simply take the whole equivalence class of this curve gamma. Now, this is a well-defined bijection because all the curves in the equivalence class have the same tangent vector on the lower level. And then, of course, it's no problem to push this tangent vector to the upper level. Hence, we see, for a submanifold, now we can choose which tangent space is better for our calculations. In fact, because of this bijection, we will often not distinguish between both tangent spaces. Okay, now one crucial fact is still missing here, because we want that this new tangent space is also a vector space. For the submanifolds, this one was a subspace in Rn, but now what is about the new tangent space here? Of course, it's also a vector space, but we have to talk about the operations in it. So what we need is an addition and a scalar multiplication. Indeed, for being a vector space, we need to know how to add vectors and how to scale them. So exactly these two operations have to be well defined. So you might already know, this is not so hard, we just have to go to the lower level with the map H. 
Here I call this map h star because it will be a new map defined on the tangent space. So please note, the idea here is simply that we go to the lower level where we have the tangent vectors in Rk. And of course, in Rk, we can simply add them. Okay, then let's talk about the map h star here. There we know the input is a tangent vector, which means it's an equivalence class of a curve gamma. And then we simply send that to our tangent vector in Rk. So we have this derivative as always, and now we can also show that this is a bijective map. Hence, after adding the two vectors in Rk, we can just make it backwards to Tpm again. So the short idea is, we go to the lower level, use the addition, and then we go back. And now you just have to show that this addition on the left hand side is well defined, so you have to show it does not matter which chart h you choose. Okay, and now it might not be a surprise for you that we can do the same with the scalar multiplication. So first go to the lower level, scale the vector, and then go back again. Okay, and with that we have it. Now you know the definition of this new vector space we call the tangent space of the abstract manifold M. And what we can exactly do with that, we will see in the next videos. So I really hope that we meet again and have a nice day. Bye bye.